I believe we are ready to begin. Please stand for the opening hymn. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with your spirit. I welcome you all to this celebration of the life of Father Len Banus, a dear friend, a beautiful brother in Holy Cross, a beautiful member of this lovely family. May the God of mercies, the God of all consolation be with you. And with your in the waters of baptism, Len died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. On the day of his baptism, Len put on Christ. On the day of his religious profession, he was clothed with the grace to live the evangelical counsels. At the end of time, may Christ clothe him in glory and unfold him in his love.
In baptism, Len received the mark of Christ's cross. At his profession of perpetual vows, he received the image of Christ crucified and was invited to follow in his footsteps. May he come to share in the glory of his resurrection. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Len, your servant and priest, whom you honored with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exult forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before others indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. God. 
guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil should I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, nothing shall I want. He leads me by safe paths, nothing shall I fear. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd. Nothing shall I want. He leads me by safe paths. Nothing shall I Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, nothing shall I want. He leads me by safe paths, nothing shall I A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is, tr is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord.
I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will, gird, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Congregation of Holy Cross, I'd like to express our sincere condolences to the family and relatives of Father Venus who are here this afternoon, of whom he always spoke so highly and so lovingly, to his colleagues in the College of Arts and Letters, and to the parishioners in Buchanan and St. Thomas Parish in Elkhart, whom he loved so much. Father Bonius, indeed, was loved and respected and admired by all. When I was asked to give this homily this afternoon, my first thought was that Father Bonius really did not need a homily, another homily, because his whole life as a priest and religious seemed to be a homily itself a witness, an example for others. So I simply ask myself, what can I, and perhaps others, learn from the example of Father Len's life? First of all, Father Len might be called an apostle of preparedness. He was always prepared for whatever he did. He prepared his classes conscientiously so that he could call on every student every day. He wrote out each homily carefully, making sure all the quotations were correct. And he left nothing to chance. And I am confident he was equally prepared when the Christ call last evening, Tuesday evening, he knew that life was only a preparation, a prelude into eternity, that the power and majesty and beauty of the world is only a manifestation and a reflection of God and his eternity. And the efforts we make 
here on earth to grow in union with God and love of our neighbor are only a preparation for stepping into that perfect union with God and perfect love of neighbor in eternity. Let your belts be fastened around your waist, the reading tells us, and your lamps be ready. Be like men awaiting their master's return, so that when he arrives and knocks, you will open to him without delay. I am confident that Father Len was well prepared when Gan came to knock last Tuesday as he was prepared in every other area of his life. And if he were giving this homily this afternoon, he would say simply, take the time, give it due thought, prepare well, and don't leave things to chance. Father Len's life exhibited a deep appreciation for the Mass also. He always spoke fondly of his ordination in Rome. He offered Mass every Sunday in a local or neighboring parish, concelebrated regularly with the Holy Cross community here in Sacred Heart Basilica. And with no other commitment, he would offer Mass even alone in the Corby Hall Chapel in the afternoon when he returned from work. The Mass was something he never neglected. The Mass is the reenactment of Christ's offering of himself to the Father on Calvary. But not simply as he was 2,000 years ago, but, if, but as he is today, the mystical Christ, head and members, and thus, Father Len, a member of that mystical Christ, could offer himself all that he was, all that he had, and all that he did to the Father in union with Christ in his death and resurrection. Are you not aware that we who were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death through baptism into his death, we were buried with him so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life if we have been united with him through likeness to his death, so shall we be through a likeness of his resurrection. The Mass unites us to Christ in his death and resurrection, and it is no wonder that Father Len never failed to offer it each day. And the divine office, the breviary, was simply an extension of the Mass, the public prayer of the Church, and Father Len was equally faithful to that. When he failed to be present last Wednesday for morning prayer, the community knew it had to be something serious. Father Len's religious and priestly life was also a life of service to others. His life was nothing if not busy, overcrowded with service to others. Seminary teaching, college teaching, academic administration, residence hall prefecting, Holy Cross Superior, parish ministry, and even in his retirement years, a university assistant dean. Like all of us, he had been given a unique set of talents and abilities and opportunities by God, and he used them for the benefit and the service of others. It probably did not matter what the particular assignment was because he was doing it only for God, a beautiful witness. 
I'm not sure this afternoon if this is a homily or not. It is simply a look into Father Len's life as a priest and religious, as many of us knew him over the years. Things that we have admired, things that we have learned. All of us are better for having known him. The souls of the just are in the hands of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, but they are at peace. But if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine. Thank you, Father Len, for your witness and your example. And may you rest in peace in your reward. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from death. With confidence we pray in his name. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the church in these very difficult times, for the victims of sexual abuse and for their perpetrators, and for those struggling with faith in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace in every land, especially in Syria and in Afghanistan, and for an end to all forms of terrorism and the shedding of blood. Let us pray to the Lord. For our five Holy Cross seminarians who this past weekend professed perpetual vows in the Congregation of Holy Cross, and for those ordained deacons, may they be examples of poor, chaste, and obedient ministers to the flock of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For the many students whom Father Len taught over the course of his years here at Notre Dame, both seminarians and lay students alike, and for the members of classical the classical language department, which Father Banus also chaired, let us pray to the Lord. For the parishioners of St. Thomas the Apostle Church in Elkhart, where Father Len selflessly offered his services on a regular basis for more than 25 years. May they know God's every blessing and the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of Father Banus, who mourn at his passing, May they be comforted and strengthened by the Easter mystery and the promise of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. For our brother Leonard, who for some 66 years ministered faithfully as a Holy Cross priest and religious, 
May he come to share in the banquet feast of heaven together with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. In company with the Holy Mother of God and all the saints without ceasing, let us pray to the Lord. God, our shelter and our strength, hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother Len. Cleanse him of his sins and grant him the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that these our gifts may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Lord, 
Grant, we pray, almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Leonard, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink, we proclaim of your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look to his second coming, we offer to you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Leonard, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer you God in the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
together. We hold the death of the Lord deep in our hearts. Living now we remain with Jesus the Christ. Once we were people afraid, lost in the night. Then by your cross we were saved, dead became living, life from your giving. We hold the death of Something which we have known, something we've touched. What we have seen with our eyes, this we have heard, life-giving word. We hold the death of the Lord.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Lend, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. With faith in Jesus Christ, let us take leave of our brother Leonard. His religious life on this earth was a sign of the kingdom which is to come. May our farewell express our love for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day in that kingdom, we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our brother Len, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed on our brother Len in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother Len to his place of rest. In paradisum De tu cante angeli in tu adverso su ci piange martire. 